Hi, my name is Elaine and in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you the story of adopting our greyhound called Frank. So you may remember in my last video, um, I went through the reasons that myself and my boyfriend bought a house. And to summarize, there were two of them. The first was a sort of a financial business decision. And then the second one is that for the past two years, myself and my boyfriend have wanted to get a dog. And getting a house was key to that. So a bit of background on us as pet owners. So when I was younger, I had, uh, I grew up with a Yorkshire Terrier. He was like a kind of a stock Yorkshire Terrier. His name was Jock and we had him till he was about 16 years old. And when he died, um, I asked my mom, could we get another pet? And she said that we couldn't get a dog because I was 18 at the time and she knew that I was about to move out and go to college. So she said that we could get a cat. So after that, we had Pixie and Pixie is still very much alive. She's about 12 and she lives with my mom. She's technically my cat, but actually, realistically, my mom did all the minding and feeding and <laughs> whatever, so she's actually my mom's cat. Uh, and she lives in Waterford. And then Ronan, he has always wanted a dog. He said since he's about five years old, he wanted to get a dog. But his parents um, both worked, so it just wasn't feasible for them and they worried that the dog wouldn't get enough attention. So instead, he grew up with cats. So he had one cat, which they had for years and years and years. And then when that cat died, um, they adopted two rescue cats who are, again, are still alive and they live in Ronan's parents' house. So both of us did grow up with animals in our house. And it wasn't really until we moved in together and we had our own proper place and I was no longer house sharing that we realized how sad it is to have a house that doesn't have an animal in it. So much so that our neighbors had a cat and he would often come into our apartment and we'd get so excited when he'd come in the door and we'd just pet him and maybe pick him up. We'd never feed him because we didn't know if he had any allergies or anything, um, but it was just that excitement of having the animal there. Friends of ours also have a dog, so every time, time they'd come to visit, we'd get so excited or when we go down to their house, all we would talk about is the dog. And I think we just realized that there was a sort of a canine or feline shaped hole in our lives. So kind of for the past two years, we've been talking about getting this dog. Not this particular dog, but getting a dog. You might be asking though, where did we go from me having a Yorkshire Terrier and Ronan having cats to getting a giant greyhound? Well, I don't know. I don't know where the greyhound thing came from. Um, I'd never met a greyhound. I'd never been around a greyhound before. We would have watched a lot of Jenna Marbles videos and she has, a, uh, they've got two Italian greyhounds. And those dogs were kind of, I just loved how silly and funny and they did funny faces. But I just felt for me that an Italian greyhound was a little bit too sort of precious and too small. Uh, then we sort of discovered whippets and we looked at whippets. Over time, we just came across greyhounds on Instagram. We followed loads of greyhound accounts and before you know it, we were hooked and we were set on that this big goofy animal that we just needed one in our lives. Ronan said he'd always wanted a big dog. I didn't really care, I just wanted a dog. But I'd say it's probably been two years that we've just been following greyhound accounts and like sending each other pictures every single day of greyhounds and talking about getting a greyhound. And yeah, it just sort of evolved, I think. And for us, greyhounds are probably the perfect type of pet because of their personality and because of our personalities. First off, they're quite calm and they're quite gentle. And even though they're quite big, they're actually quite space efficient and they're quite dainty when they're going around your house. Now, Frank does hit his head into things or he bangs into things, but he never really, you know, like with a Labrador where, or a Golden Retriever where it has a big tail and the tail is like swishing back and forth and whacking off people. That doesn't really happen. If Frank wags his tail, it's all very gentle and very composed. Also, they are a, obviously they're used for racing and coursing, so they're very fast animal. However, the type of exercise that they need is basically like 20 minute, 30 minute walk in the morning, 20 minute, 30 minute walk in the evening. And for us, that was kind of, great and then the rest of the time they just spend it like hanging out on the sofa sleeping so for us that was perfect especially if you know we're in work we know that the greyhound is happy he's just fast asleep if i'm editing a uh, greyhound will just hang out with me or if we're watching tv in the evening times like me and ronan's personalities are that we like to be active in sort of a burst and then we like to chill out and we do a lot of things sedentary things in the house like that like editing or recording videos frank's actually downstairs with ronan but if ronan wasn't here he would probably be lying in the corner fast asleep and you'd be hearing like little grunts and things also they're kind of quite cat-like um, just in the way like that you'd often see them cleaning themselves in a similar way to a cat or they'd curl up in a ball kind of like a cat and they've just got that real like gentle quiet calm disposition which uh, is exactly something that I want in a dog rather than one that's hyper and needs loads of energy and attention and 
you know, Frank is super happy when he's just snuggled in beside you on the couch and that's exactly the type of dog that I want. I'll actually probably do a video, a longer video in maybe the next couple of months once I get to know Frank's personality a bit more and maybe go through some of the reasons why, you know, greyhounds are good or not good, you know, the pros and cons of getting a greyhound. Um, from my own experiences. So once we obviously decided on our Greyhound, we went about searching for, you know, a place that we'd get the Greyhounds from. So originally we went to one charity, we were looking at the charity and they would have Greyhounds intermittently, but after maybe for about three or four months, they had no Greyhounds. Then uh, we came across this website, which was a charity called HUG, which means Homes for Unwanted Greyhounds. And they were a specific Greyhound, Sighthound, rehoming charity so they take greyhounds in from the industry either greyhounds that have you know retired from racing or retired from coursing or where they just didn't really make the cut and they had no chase instinct or they had no interest and rather than the trainers or owners disposing of the dogs and they give them to hug and then hug rehome them in ireland they also are twinned with a couple of international charities so i think there's one in the uk one in germany one in italy and they sort of export the dogs to those charities and then those charities rehome the dogs in houses that want greyhounds and we started following them probably a bit before Christmas and I just kept an eye on the type of posts they were putting on social media the type of dogs just the interaction that they had and we really liked everything about them and sort of what the charity stood for and how they conducted themselves they also do these things called meet and greets where um, they go to a um, there's a, a pet shop called Maxi Zoo so they go to a Maxi Zoo somewhere in Dublin on a weekend and they have greyhounds there and people can go and meet them and I suppose the idea is to show people who maybe are unsure uh, that greyhounds are a really good pet and really good for families and really good for all different types of lifestyles. So we obviously had to wait until our house renovations were finished and uh, at the start of the year we had one more thing, we just had to get some doors fitted and a couple of small little bits. And once we had those done, uh, we popped along to one of the meet and greets. So we went to the one in Leopardstown, can't remember what the date is, but I'll insert it here if I can find it. And we met the people from the charity. They were so amazing and the dogs were so amazing and they were all so helpful and answered all of our questions questions so we went home that night and we filled out the adoption form which is on their website so they ask you loads of different questions like where you live and like your lifestyle and how long the dog will be on its own you know and there's loads of different parts of it if there's anything specific that you'd like like some people might say oh you want a female dog or only want a small dog or whatever we had told them when we met them that we didn't care what color the dog was we just wanted a dog that would suit us and we had seen a campaign in November for Black Friday and it spoke about how black greyhounds um, and probably similar with cats are harder to rehome. So for us, we had told them that and we were kind of half expecting that they would probably give us a black greyhound because they're a bit harder to rehome. So we told them that and then we um, got a call to say that there's someone was coming to do a home check. So um, this lovely woman arrived on the Friday of the following week and she came in, she checked our garden and she sat down with us. We had a cup of coffee and we just chatted about greyhounds. We asked her lots of questions and she gave us all this information. Then uh, we still had one small bit of renovation stuff to do. So we told her that uh, we would keep in touch and the minute that we were ready to adopt, that we would go for it. So that rolled around, um, just coming up to the start, the end of February, start of March. And we contacted them and we were told that there was a specific dog, his name was Donald, and that they'd love us to meet Donald. They felt that Donald would really suit us. Uh, we were originally meant to meet him at a meet and greet, but then things happened really fast and uh, we actually went out to meet him at the kennels that he's staying in. One thing that's quite handy about greyhounds is they don't actually know their names, so they're not used to being called by a certain name. So while his name was Donald, the reason it was Donald, um, I'll explain in a bit, but uh, we were able to change his name. So we knew straight away that we weren't gonna keep the name Donald, but that that's kind of a nice thing. So like if there is a name that you don't like that the greyhound has, you can change it really easily. And um, so we went out to meet Frank and he was staying in these kennels. The people who own the kennels were lovely. And um, Frank, well, Donald was such a sweet dog. He was huge. I was so surprised at how big he is. Got more used to it now, but when I first met him, I was like, whoa. So we got to go and bring him for a walk. And while we were out there, we actually, uh, we were talking about different things and they were like, oh, we were talking about his name and we said we were gonna change it. And they said like, what are you gonna change it to? And Ronan turned to me and he just said, I think he looks like a Frank. And then we kind of looked at him and everyone else was like, yeah, I think he's a Frank. So we decided then and there that his name was gonna be Frank. So after that, we went home and we uh, were talking to the charity people and they said that we could pick up the dog that following Friday. So this is a Monday and a Friday. So we had a couple of days and we needed to get 
everything sorted. So we got him like a bed um, or bedding. We actually just used a single duvet that we folded over so I could change the sheets quite easily. We got him blankets, we got him toys, we got him raised feeding bowls because greyhounds need to eat at a raised bowl. We got him a crate. Uh, which you'll find out why that was unsuccessful. There's loads of different things. They had actually sent us a list of all the stuff that he needed to get, like a collar, a lead, even a jacket. We just picked up all of the things as much as possible that we could possibly get before we got him. And it was one of the most tense, nervous weeks ever because I was so anxious about getting our dog. I also read as much as possible I could about greyhounds just so I was prepared. For some stroke of genius, I decided to actually vlog the first couple of days. So, I'm just gonna cut away now and I'm gonna roll the vlog and you can see what the first two to three days were like with Frank and the sort of stresses and worries that me and Ronan went through to get him settled. Hello, so today is Friday the 1st of March. It's nearly nine o'clock in the morning and today is a very exciting day because after probably two years, maybe a year and a half of talking about it, uh, me and Ronan are getting a dog today and we are adopting a greyhound. So we're going out to this place in Lusk, which is in North County, Dublin, which is about a half an hour, 45 minutes drive away. So we're going up to get our dog. We're both quite nervous and we're worried that like we'll feed him wrong or he won't like us or he'll be sad. Um, but he seems like a really cool dog and he's really friendly and he was licking us on our faces and stuff when we went out to see him. So hopefully it'll all go well and um, I'll talk to you in a bit. chilling in the back of the car, chilling like a villain. Um, but he's now our dog, which is vaguely terrifying, because now, as I said to Ronan, now we have a dependent. <laughs> um, but we're just, we have to stop off at a pet shop just to get him uh, one or two last bits that we didn't get, because we couldn't get his food in any of the local pet shops near us. But, um, and then we're gonna bring him back home. And then what they recommend is that you bring them out into the garden first thing, and then you wait until they go to the bathroom so that they understand then that that's where their toilet is. And then you bring them inside the house and you let them explore and stuff. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna bring him straight through to the back garden and then wait with him until he goes to the bathroom. And that's, uh, that's where you'll see me next probably, unless I start um, playing with him when Roland's gone into the pet shop. But right now he's in the boot. Hello. So we just have to wait with him down here now for as long as it takes him to go. Yeah. Frank. Oi. Hello. Hello, my boy. Okay, so we're home, oh, a couple of hours now. It's half four and he's just had his dinner because we wanted to try and keep him on the routine that he had when he was in the kennels that he was staying in. So we fed him there and he was hungry and we um, didn't have any weird moments with him. He's been really, really good. The only kind of t couple of times is if like one of us leaves the room or the door is closed behind him, he wants to go into a different room or whatever. So we might have to work tomorrow on kind of leaving him alone a bit more so that um, he understands that we do go away but we come back. Um, also then he was kind of barking at one point we were trying to figure out what was wrong but we think we just, he had to go to the bathroom. So we brought him outside and uh, he did his business and right now he's just chilling. He's even like got to grips with the stairs. Uh, he had a little nap and uh, he's just doing kind of fun dog things. Is that right Franks? Frank? Frank! Hi Frank! He's no idea what his name is. 
we also live in quite a busy housing estate because the buses go past. So I think he's quite fascinated by the buses and things like that. But I'm actually going out for dinner with a couple of my friends. So we'll see how that goes. But it'd probably be good to introduce him to the fact that not all of us, like both of us will be here at, all the time. And at the moment I'm feeding him because I'll be the one that'll be feeding him most just because of the times that he'll have his breakfast at. It'll be kind of more suited to me than to Ronan. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to be going out soon. So I'm going to go up and get ready. And then, um, but I'd say he will settle down. He's kind of easy. Like he, he doesn't really get focused on anything. And uh, hopefully he'll just like wind down and sleep and relax. Let's see where he is now. Hello. Hi. So I'm back from being out and uh, Frank was really good when I was gone. And Ronan's parents were here and he was hanging out with them. And he slept loads and he just seems a lot more chill and a lot more relaxed than um he's just there that's why i'm looking at him and then when we first got him so we have this big crate which arrived so we had another crate that just was a little bit smaller so he's a big crate but he's just not a fan like he doesn't understand about getting into the crate so what we decided to do today was just set him up this sort of bed here and that maybe he'll get used to it and then we can replace if that's a sleeping part, we might be able to replace it with the crate at a later date. Like, we don't know if that's the right thing, but I just would hate if he didn't sleep tonight because he didn't want to get into the crate. We're just kind of, we don't know whether he has a thing with it, but he's, he hasn't even tried to get into the crate at all. He doesn't really have an interest. I think the first, when he came in, he had a look at it, but he hasn't really, like, we have no interest. And we're just worried that maybe he had a really bad experience with the crate. Right now, his bed's ready, so I'm going to give him some treats and get him settled down for the night and we're gonna go to sleep. Okay, so it is the evening of our second day with Frank. Last night, we kind of, I suppose, messed up his bedtime routine and we didn't really think it through properly. Um, and we sort of put him into the kitchen, went upstairs and he hadn't actually spent that much time in the kitchen. He, there was a crate which he just didn't like. He didn't understand that it was his bed and he wasn't comfortable in it. Um, and he just started howling and howling and howling and he started trying to bite our table and just really, really, really upset. So we left him for probably about a half an hour and then we were like, okay, we can't keep doing this. So and um, we were reading in some of the, the Greyhound books that we have and we were like, they said that because they're pack animals, they find it more difficult to be on their own. So in the first couple of nights, you actually, it's better for them to sleep near you. Now, if you don't want them on, like you can decide yourself if you want them on the bed, that's great. But with us, we don't want them on our bed and we don't want them in our bedroom either. It's just our bedroom's too small. So what actually ended up happening is I waited until he was a little bit quieter. Then we went downstairs and I went downstairs and we set up a camp bed. And I said that I would sleep on the camp bed, but he was still kind of pacing and he was still quite like antsy and upset. So... Ronan came back down and he decided to take him for a walk. I think part of the reason he was antsy and upset is that he wouldn't get into the crate, hated the crate. So when he was gone on his walk, I pulled his bed out of the crate. When he came back into the kitchen, then I just kind of made no reaction to him whatsoever. And then he came in and he like sniffed around or whatever, drank a bit of water, and then he settled down to bed. And Ronan went upstairs and then I just stayed there being like as silent as possible. And uh, we put a lamp on because I don't think he likes the dark and he didn't like when the light was off, but the light in the hallway was on. So we had all the lights off downstairs, put a lamp on. It was really chill and really relaxing. So he went to sleep and he slept the whole way through the night. Um, and then today we've been slowly trying to get him used to being on his own because we're going, we'll be both in work on Tuesday. Um, so we're getting used to that. It's actually very hard. <laughs> Um, and you think that it won't bother you when he's whinging or crying, but it's like with a baby, like if it's your baby and you're responsible for it and you hear it crying, you're gonna go and pick it up and mind it and stuff. So tonight our plan is um, that Ronan's gonna stay downstairs with him, but again, Ronan's just going to kind of like get into bed, not react and like, just ignore him for the night and as if like there's another body there, just continue on as normal. So that's where we're at. Um, I'll try and insert some footage of him. Right now he's sleeping so I'm trying to just leave him relax and we're going to go and watch TV and see if he wants to join us or if he just hangs out um, in his bed. It's been about three weeks since uh, I la recorded that last clip and so much has changed about Frank and things are so amazing with him. Before I go into sort of some of the teething problems maybe that we had to go through I just want to give you a couple of stats on him. 
So obviously his name is Frank. His coursing name was Blueview Donald. You can actually go on to igb.ie, which is the Irish Greyhound Board, and look up um, his lineage and parentage and you know find out who his mom and his dad were. Um, and actually through Instagram, I've already found uh, Frank's nephew and Frank's half-sister. He was bred for coursing, but he wasn't very good at it. Ronan actually looked up and we found like some derby or meat or whatever that he was involved in. And I think he came about 31st out of 32 dogs, which is the reason that we have him because he would have been bred for that and then he would have failed his trials. Um, and then he would have been given up for adoption. So his coat is a nice black color, but there's kind of a brown in it when the sun shines on it. He also has a white bit at the front and then he's got like little brindle spots in really faint brindle ones. And that's actually because his dad is brindle and I think his mom was a black greyhound. So that's where that mix came from. He's quite tall boy. He's 29 inches to the shoulder, uh, which is quite tall, but that's about average for a male greyhound. We adopted him on the 1st of March and he will be three on the 1st of April. So we'll have a, a nice little doggy party for him, I think. He's also the sweetest, kindest, most beautiful dog that I've ever met. He's just stolen me and Roland's heart in the past three weeks. <laughs> He's amazing. But I suppose before we got to the point where we we're comfortable, it probably took us about a week of troubleshooting different issues. So our main stresses with Frank was that we wanted to make sure that he um, he was okay at night and that uh, he had no trouble with separation anxiety when we went to work during the day. So the very first night, as you saw, we completely messed up um, with his nighttime routine. So we decided to obviously take it slower with the separa separation anxiety and alone training during the day. So we started with five minutes and we went up to 15, 20 minutes. Then we started to leave him for longer increments. So I remember one day I left him for an hour and a half and I was basically out like walking around my housing estate in the rain, listening to music. Uh, waiting for that hour and a half to, to come up. The longest we've ever left him is five hours and the way that me and Ronan work, so basically on a Tuesday and a Thursday are the long days that Frank could be on his own, but it's only up to about six hours the way that we both work because I go to work earlier and Ronan goes to work later. Um, and then on a Wednesday, he'd be on his own for about four or five hours. The rest of the time, he might be on his own for an hour or two here and there, like if we're going to the groceries and stuff like that. And in hindsight, we probably he probably actually would have been fine. He seems to be fine on his own during the day. Uh, we're glad that we did it in such short you know, increments because it got him confident and it got us confident. Um, and Frank knows that when we go out the door, we are gonna come back at some point. Another thing that we do, which was recommended um, from the research that we did, was that when you go, before you go and before you come back, you just don't make a big deal about it. So you just kind of ignore the dog somewhat. Some people might say that's cruel, but actually when a dog is getting really excited and energized that you come in the front door, it actually can be a sign of anxiety in the dog. So we try and keep things really calm and we give him a Kong toy, which uh, we fill with food. And that usually distracts him when we're leaving and by the time he's finished that he's so tired he just sleeps until we get home. So that's how we're getting on with separation anxiety. He's doing really well. In terms of bedtimes, um, we alternated sleeping on a camp bed in the kitchen for a full week before we decided what to do and we just realized that the stress it would have taken to get Frank to be happy downstairs in the kitchen and um, it was just easier to let him sleep upstairs. So we got a baby gate and it we got it from Argos and I think that the, the brand, it's really nice. We actually got two baby gates. The first one came off the door because it just didn't work because our door frames I don't think are level. So this one was, a, the next one was a screw in one and it's I think like Kugel, 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 Chugel, but it's an Argos brand and it's a gorgeous wood color and it actually brings out the wood in the floor in our bedroom. So Frank sleeps outside he actually sleeps in the doorway of the spare bedroom unless we have guests then he'll sleep out in the landing but he has a bed upstairs and a bed downstairs and when we're going to bed he's really great he just pops into bed curls up we give him a dentist stick before he goes to sleep if you wake up in the middle of the night sometimes he'll whine because he thinks you're going out but once you get back into bed he just turns around settles and goes back asleep so that's been really good then other small little teething problems we had with him i suppose was um we and needed to make sure that he went to the bathroom outside in our garden. So that took a couple of days for him to be comfortable doing that. He also hasn't really started to play yet and that probably will come in a couple of days. But I think part of it as well is we're trying to get him to play in the garden and it's actually a bit cold. So we do put a jacket and stuff on him, but I think the weather hasn't been really great. And then the same with walks, he's not too interested in going for walks. 
And again, I think it's just the weather is not that nice and it has kind of consistently been raining for about three weeks. Another thing on his walks is he's a little bit nervous of other dogs and I think that's more out of exposure and, and not being exposed to other dogs. So he would have been used to have been living around greyhounds his entire life. He's also a real cuddle bug and he just wants to snuggle into you all the time, which we totally welcome and that's great. And beyond that, yeah, he's just starting to show his little personality. He does this thing which is called roaching where they stick their paws up in the air. He sometimes shows his teeth. Um, which again is another sign that greyhounds are relaxed or if they stick out their tongue and he does like little like he runs in his sleep at night sometimes and he does like little sleep barks and you just have to be really careful with the greyhound if you do have one that you make a noise before you wake them because sometimes it can startle them um, and they might snap but he hasn't done that he's just like he, the second you stand up right he's awake and he wants to follow you he still follows us all over the house and we hoped that he would kind of grow out of that but I think he's always just going to be our shadow and he's going to come with us whenever we go in the house because he kind has a bit of FOMO and he wants to know what you're up to. Um, but that's kind of it. I have some other videos planned that I'll probably do over the next year about Frank and if there's any requests for videos please pop them in the comments below. But yeah that is the story of how we adopted um, our beautiful handsome three-year-old greyhound called Frank. Also if you'd like to keep up to date with Frank he does have his own Instagram account and he has surpassed my uh, followers in three weeks um, and I've been trying to grow that Instagram account for maybe two years, but it's at Frank T Great, which I'll just stick here and you can follow him there and I post things every day. Well, he posts things every day. You can also follow me on my social media links. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please click the subscribe button and I'll be back with another video in one or two Sunday's time. Thanks for watching.